It's time for a video on Pace 1101. I'm going to look at pages 16 through 18 with you here about least common multiples, and that's going to become a very important concept that we're going to use then in finding common denominators for <clears throat> algebraic expressions, which sounds intimidating. It uh, won't be too bad, but it's not necessarily easy. Um, the feedback I had from a student who went through the first several pages of this pace was that up through about page 15, it wasn't too bad. Now, if you disagree with that and you feel like we need to do a lesson about one of those other pages, please let me know. <clears throat> but for now, let's dive in here on pages 16 through 18. <clears throat> the least common multiple means, so think about LCM, start with that word multiple, okay? So multiple means a bigger number. So like the multiples of 3 are 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, etc. The multiples of 5 are 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, so they're big numbers, okay? <clears throat> the multiples of 12 would be like 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, etc. Um, 18 would be like 18, 36, and I'm not going to try to go any further. Uh, the multiples of 30 would be 30, 60, 90, um, 120, you know, we could just keep going. All right, so we're carrying on with all these big numbers, and our goal is to find a number way out there that they both, that all three of these would have in common. So common is the next keyword. It's a common multiple, and there could be a lot of them. And so then we come back to the word least. We want to find the smallest common denominator. Um, least common multiple, rather. The smallest multiple that they have in common. So start with the word multiple to think about big numbers. And then what do they have in common? Find the least. Now let me show you a shortcut, okay, for doing that with numbers. Let's take the number 12. What are all the prime numbers that make that up? Well, if you broke it down, you'd have 2 times 6, and 6 is 2 times 3. So let me write it this way. 12 is 2 times 2 times 3, okay? 18 is 2 times 3 times 3, because 3 times 3 is 9, or you could think of 6 times 3 is 18, all right? 30, let's think about that, 2 times 3 times 5, 6 times 5. Now, how do I come up with the least common multiple? I'm going to take every number. Later when we do variables, we're going to take every, every uh, variable. And it might even be a quantity. We take every factor that's used in any of them. So let's see what's used. We have a 2 that's used. We have 3 that's being used, and we have 5 that's being used, but now I have to go back and I have to look at what is the most number of times that the 2 is used in any one number. So 2 is used twice here, it's used once here, it's used once here. So which is bigger, 2, 1, or 1? And don't say 4, we're not going to use all of them. Just the most that is used in any of them, and of course that is the twice. So I'm going to put an exponent of 2 there. I'm going to use 2 twice. 3 is used here, it's used here, it's used here. It's used once here, twice here, once here. So it's the most number of times that 3 is being used. Twice. So we're going to use it twice in the least common multiple. 5 is only used once, so I'll just leave it once in my answer. Okay, then we can multiply these together. So 4 times 9 times 5, and I'll let you, uh, well, like 4 times 5 is 20, 20 times 9, so I guess that would be 180. Okay, did that in my head, pretty good, huh? <clears throat> all right, now let's take, um, if we have all variables, we're going to do a similar thing, except we don't even have to break it down here. We could just say, all right, all of these have an x, a Y is found in some of them, a Z. Now, Z is not in this one, but it is in these down here. So every factor that's used in any of them. Oh, and in this last one, I see a 3. Okay, so I need a 3 in my least common multiple. 
Any other letters used? X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, X, Y. Nope, we're good. Now I go back and I look at the exponents and say, what is the most number of times three is used? What's well, just once? What's the most number of times X is used? Two, one, two. So what exponent do I need to use on X here? If you're trying to think five, you're not understanding this yet, okay? We don't add them up. We take the biggest number that's used in any of them, and that is, in this case, two. What's the most number of times that Y is used in any of these? One here, one here, three here. So three, right? What's the most number of times that Z is used? None here. Once here, but it is used twice here. So we have to use it twice here, okay? So again, every factor that's being used, and we take it the most number of times it's used in any of them. All right, so I just kind of made up these two. They're similar to what you have. They don't give you a lot of practice. On page 18, they give you a couple of this type, a couple of this type, and then they jump right into using uh, these where you have to factor them, and actually the parentheses, the quantities, become factors. So I'm not going to finish this one for you, but this one is in your homework. So let's, let's try to set it up anyways, all right? We need to factor this. So we have the difference of perfect squares. So that means we're going to have two parentheses, A, B, A, B. And then remember, because this is the difference, when one of these will be plus and the other will be minus. If I did the FOIL method first, I'd have a squared. The outer is negative ab. The inner is positive ab, which means that'll cancel out. And then b times b is b squared, minus b squared. All right, this factor is just a minus b. I don't have to do anything with that. And then this is 5a plus b. Ah. So we actually have 1. This is the same as this. Okay, so it's the same factor, it just appears in, you know. And then this factor is the same as this one, all right? So in my LCM, I'm just going to list every factor that's used, and only, even if it appears once here and once here, I only have to use it once in the LCM, okay? So I'm going to let you finish that one on your own. I'm not going to give you the answer. You should be able to do that. And then the last one on the page is very similar to that. All right, we'll come back and do a video about denominators in fractions.